All right. So uh, I was making coffee this morning, and uh, and I thought of this class. Interestingly, um, so the idea. Let me turn on the light. Ah, there we go. So the idea was um, when I was making coffee, you know. Uh, I have a percolator, kind of like one of those things they put over a cup and they put a filter in it and they put ground coffee into the filter. You know, so there's a whole long process you know, to make coffee and that, that's actually intentional. So anyway, um, so I thought about this class because I thought about the interdependency between the jobs and, um, and, and how Jazz 2 can, uh, re can figure out the interdependency. And also, you know, t the trade-off of bet you know, between you know, specifying very simple jobs and then string the jobs together to, to get something bigger done, as opposed to specify one big job, you know, that sequences the entire thing. So I'll give you the comparison. Okay, I'll give you the comparison in the context of making coffee. So if I want to make one single job to make coffee, then I'll have to procure the resources. In other words, I need access to uh, the electric kettle. I need access to the percolator. I need access to the filter, which is a consumable. I need access to the coffee grinder. And I need access to the cup, okay, you'll eventually use to uh, uh, you know, hold the you know, finished coffee. So I need a hog, and you know, basically I need to hog all of these resources before the job can even begin. So, and then during the process of this job, no one else, no other job can use any one of these resources. So if my son says, you know, but dad, I want to make instant noodle, and I need the, you know, the electric kettle, I go like, nope, making coffee. Um, yeah, so that's a, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the the situation. So that's what happens when you have a one big job and you know and then you specify all the resources in order to start the big job is you're going to hog a lot of resources for the entire duration of the job so the opposite to this approach is to you know break it down into tiny little jobs okay so the you know, one job may be just you know having the boiling water okay so you you basically go okay i need um, just the electric kettle uh put you know like four four uh, 400 cc, you know, of water in it, and then start and set the the thermostat to a certain you know temperature, and then start it. And when it's done, let me know. Another job is to grind the coffee, right? You know, so you 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 acquire the coffee grinder, make sure it has coffee beans in it, and then you start the process. Make sure you have a container to uh, hold the ground coffee. So all of these things, you know, they they get. They basically uh, correspond to data sets, okay? You know, because one data set will represent the coffee bean that you put into the coffee grinder, and then another co uh, data set will correspond to the um, the container that holds the ground coffee. Uh, same thing with the um, electric kettle so you need to put water into the kettle you know that's your know, input data set and then the hot water that's coming out of it is the output data set so you basically specify a bunch of jobs like this another one is the actual uh, you know, brewing of the coffee so for that job you need ground coffee you need uh, hot water you need the uh, the percolator. You need the filter, and then you need the coffee mug, you know, to so that you can drink the coffee out of something. So, but when you break a big job into these tiny little jobs, then each job it doesn't have to hog um, a whole bunch of resources. In other words, while I'm waiting for uh, the electric kettle to boil water someone else can be using the coffee grinder right I mean they you know if they have another coffee maker somewhere else you know and they just need to ground the coffee I'm you know the, the job of you know um, just making hot water you know, using the electric kettle is not gonna touch is not gonna hog the coffee grinder it's not gonna hog the percolator it just goes like okay you know this job only needs this so now the question is how do you link these smaller jobs together to become one big job which is you know to make coffee for myself so i looked it up i did um i'm not sure whether the data set you know can be used you know as a dependency thing that so that just two can figure out and go like okay the output data set from this job is the input data set of another job 
I'm not 100% sure, so I'm, I can do some research on that one. But I did find this one. I did find you know, what you're seeing in the web browser. It's uh, just to exec execution control you know, or JEC. Uh, so JEC you know, is a new feature. Uh, it is actually a new feature from um, IBM. So it only it's only available for later versions. Um, so if you read this article, you know it's gonna um, tell you about this. And actually, I'm going to put the link because you cannot see the link from the uh, from the screen because I intentionally you know uh, make that portion of the browser not visible. Um, so what I'll do is I am going to use a text editor and just put it somewhere so that you can see it. I'm looking for, oh, okay, there we go. That's the text editor that I'm looking for. And I need a new window. That's what C programmed for my other class. All right, there we go. Okay, so this is the link to, um, uh, to the IBM master the mainframe instructions. Um, and then there are two more links that I can share with you. Uh, one is this one here. This one specifically talk about um, this feature in ZOS 2.3.0, and it requires and it's uh, introduced in ZOS version two, revision two, or release two. Uh, not 100% sure what R stands for. So, uh, so that's the other one, and I'll put this link also into the text editor so you can reference that one if you want to yeah I know it's kind of long I can copy and paste all of these into the the class channel later on and then the third one is this one here so this one um, talks about the syntax oh I can I copied and paste I, I dragged the wrong one into the screen um, let me see if I can find it um, It's in the JCL um, description. So if you just look up your know, JCL, uh, the syntax of JCL, there is one particular syntax you know, or statement that can do this. Um, apparently, I have lost that link, but I can I can show you how to find it too. Um, so let me see. Because it's under the ZOS JCL documentation. Okay, let me see if I can find it from here. Or maybe did I? How did I lose it? All right, so let me go back to the top level. And then on this side. It's in the JCL description. Nope, it's not under this particular tree document, uh, tree of uh, topics. Oh, huh. okay, that is not good. Hmm. But anyway, uh, if you go back to uh, the one coming from Master the Mainframe, um, it actually kind of talks about you know the this is the picture you know of how it looks like, and then it uses you know um, its own example of you know how to specify a job group and then specify the dependency, and then down here it even has um, uh, TSO commands to do it. Um, so they're very detailed, the very detailed instructions. Um, and I think the challenge is only limited to a correction in the supplied JCL uh, Jack statement stream. So this one definitely will have some sort of um, clue of how to specify the interdependency of jobs and then how to make a job group. Um, so anyway, uh, I think this is going to be helpful. You know, I, I just you know, thought of um, breaking a big job into smaller jobs and uh, because because now the scheduling you know is is more flexible when you break a bigger job into smaller jobs, the scheduling becomes more flexible you know which means you know Jazz two can make, utilize this type of information uh, 
and basically try to perform um, multiple jobs from multiple job groups as long as you know they they are not conflicting with each other. Um, so when I am you know I'm and when I'm using the percolator, um, you know assuming the hot water is in a different container, somebody else can now be using the the electric kettle. Um, and also someone else can be using the coffee grinder because I'm done using those two resources. So Jazz uh, 2, you know, can potentially use the interdependency of jobs you know, in job groups to make sure that, you know, we utilize the resources, you know, the best that we can. But at the same time, you know, we also guarantee that jobs, you know, will be executed in the right order. So the, I, so the takeaway from this discussion is um, it is a good idea, you know, using this feature, is a good idea to break a large job into smaller jobs and then use the concept of a job group and also job dependency so that, you know, uh, JS2 can, you know, um, figure out the interdependency and, you know, and then this way we can utilize system resources more effectively. So um, in addition to this, I have one more observation that I want to share. Uh, it has to do with uh, you might have heard of people saying, you know, okay, you know, if uh, if something takes the longest to do, you know, start that first, right? So that seems to be contradicting what we said the other day, where you know I said you know uh, Jazz two will put a higher will assign a higher priority to jobs that take the least amount of time to finish. So they seem to be contradictory, but they are not. So the 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 shortest job first approach. It's assuming that you cannot perform multiple jobs at the same time; that jobs cannot be concurrent. So, in that case, you know, when uh, resources are exclusive, you know, to jobs and jo and you can only do one job at a time, then performing jobs, you know, the sh the shortest job first, um, is the best strategy because that ensures that you can complete the most number of jobs before you run out of time. It's kind of like you know, in a test, okay, if you know all the questions carry the same weight. And you know, and you can identify some questions. It will only take you like you know a very short amount of time to do, and then some are really kind of long and lengthy. It's going to take you much longer to do. So you prioritize and get all the easy ones or the ones that take the least amount of time done first, so that you won't. Um, so that if you do run out of time, you're going to be run out of you'll be running out of time on fewer questions. But since all the questions carry the same weight, you know it's that's the best way you can, the the best you can do. So that's why shortest job first actually makes sense, but it is under the assumption that you cannot do multiple things at the same time. Um, and then the other one, which is you know to start something that takes a, a large, a, a longer amount of time, you know, get it started first. That one makes sense too. So I'm going to use the coffee making you know, example in this you know uh, example here. So. It, in, in in the process of making coffee, assuming that you know no one else is you know trying to use the resources, I'm the only person you know in the kitchen. So in that case, um, uh, having the electric kettle to boil water is the longest. Okay, so I'm gonna start that first. I I will fill it up with you know uh, you know uh, water, and then I'll start the electric kettle because it takes the longest. And then when the electric kettle is boiling. Then I'll go ahead and uh, grind the coffee because grinding coffee only takes a few seconds, so it doesn't take much time. Then I will have time to take the ground coffee, you know, uh, set up the percolator, put the filter in, and then uh, put the ground coffee into the filter, and put the whole thing over the coffee mug. And then right at about that time, you know, the water is going to be done um, boiling. Then I can put, I can pour the hot water from the electric kettle, you know, over the coffee so that I can, you know, have my coffee for the day. So, but this example um, is not the same as the previous one because the while the electric kettle is doing its thing, you know, heating up the water, I can go ahead and do something else. In other words, you know, in this case, you know, there are uh, things can be done at the same time concurrently, and they all contribute to the same um, finished product. So in that case, okay, you know, it makes sense to, um, you know, start the task or the job, you know, that will take the longest longest amount of time, because otherwise everybody, all the other jobs will be waiting for that longer job to finish, and you know, so that's why it makes sense to start with you know you starting up the electric kettle, 
before I grind the coffee because if the other way around, you know, grinding the coffee first and then putting, you know, uh, setting up the percolator, then go boil the water. I mean, that doesn't seem to make sense, right? Because, you know, now I have to, there's no overlapping of time. And as a result, the entire job of making coffee is going to take uh, quite a bit longer. Okay, because, you know, now, you know, instead of having things being done at the same time, you know, they're all done in a sequence. So that's the last thing I want to share because um, because this is the kind of thing that just to, you know, with Jack, you know, GEC, you know, can figure out, you know, because it can basically go like, it can figure out the dependency. So when something can start, it will go ahead and go like, okay, is anyone else using the, the, the electric kettle? No one? Okay, I'm going to use it now, you know, so that, you know, the... Um, the the job group of making coffee, you know, um, can get you know something done first, and then while we are waiting for that to happen, we can you know grind coffee and so do some of the other things for that and for that job group. All right. Um, so in a sense, okay, I'm almost done. So in a sense, this also relates to how we prioritize job classes. Um, in the initiator associated with JS2. Remember, in, in the initiator is more or less representing um, um, a task, okay? So we have one initiator per job. So when you have like six initiators associated with uh, JS2, then you can have six jobs running concurrently. So uh, when we so it, it kind of imagine an operator, okay, you know, for a particular tool, okay, sort of, sort of. Um, so that means you know um, when you have um, you might want to have one initiator that favors jobs that makes use of the water, uh, the hot, the uh, electric kettle. One that has uh, that will favor jobs that makes use of the coffee grinder, and then one you know that is general purpose when everything is done you know that initiator would just do the stuff that is quick because everything is already prepared. So so the idea is um, um, when a job says you know I need to you know heat up water, um, it will naturally usually go to the initiator that favors jobs that specifies okay we need to you know those jobs need to use the electric kettle because this way um, when the electric kettle is indeed available it some you know and the job does require the use of the uh, the electric kettle that initiator will go like yeah I can do this I'll go ahead and use the electric kettle because it is now available so the the different priority I'm not I shouldn't say use the word priority but the different way of sorting or ordering the classes per initiator makes sense because that encourages um, concurrency you know because uh, if the, the, the example I used in class was the card printer, you know, versus the you know, statement printer versus the you know, jobs that are just purely computational. Um, and you can even add, you know, jobs that require a lot of DB2 access or jobs that require a lot of, you know, kicks, you know, access and so on. So when you can classify these jobs, you know, in terms of what type of resources they needed the most, especially the slow ones like a card printer, um, postcard printer, then you know you can utilize the resources you know with the maximum parallel you know uh, concurrency because now you know the the postcard printer can be printing for one particular job but while that job is you know just waiting for the postcard printer to finish another job can be using um, you know uh, another job that is db2 intensive can now be you know running you know and using db2 and then another job that is just purely computational you know would just go like hey you guys are mostly just waiting for something to happen okay but i can just go ahead and utilize you know, most of the processing resources because i don't need to wait for db2 to, co to come back with an answer i don't need to wait for the you know, postcard printer to be done i can just hog and use the processing resources during that time so that's kind of the idea of why we have um, different ordering of the initiator um, that's that are associated with jazz 2 and also you know um, how we assign um, job classes so we assign job classes you know depending on a few things you know it's not a priority priority is a whole separate thing but we 
uh, assign job classes or we define job classes based on um, the characteristic, the resource characteristic of um, of those jobs. Okay, jobs that require a particular printer, job re that requires a particular slow resource, you know, sitting somewhere else. You know, so we can classify based on those. All right, I'm done. Um, I'm done with this you know, little extra bit, you know, just uh, things that are inspired by making coffee in the morning. All right, um, I'll see you guys on Monday.